Boom to the hay, all you sports fans out there in the Tubulster. Welcome to the One Man Sports Rant, Gen 2.0. I am your host, Will, the alternative ESPN Sports Thrill, talking week seven, college football review. So what is Gen 2.0? Oh, I'm sorry, maybe asking. It's not 15 minutes, me flapping my guns. It's not a 15 minute sports highlight reel either. It's the best of both. Covered this very well on many an Olympic show, in depth detail. Uh, I'm not going to go there each and every time, except to say also that this show is copyrighted to the OMSR. With brief video highlights courtesy D2, CBS and NBC, ESPN, ABC, and or the Pac-12 Networks or Fox and their uh, affiliated networks in their entirety. The OMSR does not own these video highlights, but does own all the other original content. The overall concept here is thereof, therefore, most rights reserved. We also adhere to a strict standard an interpretation of the DCMA, Digital Copyright Millennium Act, is that the tenants were hashed out through WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization. These are fair use standard, minimal use, and derivatives. You could also say no money exchanging hands because the OMSR is a pro bono production. All right, so let's get to it. Week 7. I'll always let you know after the which part we're on, the clip order coming up. That's the beauty of doing a show. You do end up with a slightly longer highlight reel than you otherwise would. Oh, so there's plenty of one minute, two minute, little itty bitty ditty clips all over YouTube. That's not our goal here. I'm not trying to get 10,000 hits, million hits, whatever, whatever, however many hits. This is a sports talk show. It's me doing my thing. thing a ling a jing So you can always fast forward on average six to seven minutes, but you will miss a clip order unless the title, you know, gives it away for you. All right, so on that note, we also do try to keep the talk interesting, if not entertaining, short, sweet, and to the point with regard to the sports highlights being discussed. We also are pretty good at making a nice vignette of how things may have gone down in their singular nature pursuant to each game or event that we are covering. All right, so wait for the graphic. State University against the University of Indiana. Braxton Miller had another big game, threw for 211 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Kevin Smith, Ohio State of 24-14. Now, Miller ran for 149 yards. Look at him use the official here, Mark. This is my football right there. He's <laughs> as a shield. He's a blocker. Yeah. 67 yards. What do you put him on your ice trophy list? He's in the top 10. Top 10? <laughs> Where, how about you, Luke? Uh, he'd be in the top three right now, along with co a college football will miss the BCS more than we could imagine, Counselor May? Absolutely, Your Honor. Your Honor, in general, a person is smart, but a group of people, not so much. When the BCS was created in the 90s, a bunch of people got together and decided that we want to create a system where number one plays number two. Well, at that time, all the fans loved it. They thought that was the greatest thing since sliced bread. But then they got together later on because their teams didn't get into the championship game. They complained they whined about it. Over the course of time, since 1998, the job of the BCS was to create a number one versus number two game. They did that job over the course of time. Now, everyone wants a playoff down the road, but I grant you this, Your Honor, people will start complaining down the road that number five or number six doesn't get in and the playoff system doesn't work. Let's go back to the BCS system because they did their job correctly. Year in and year out. Counselor Holtz. Number one versus number two. Okay, Counselor Holtz. You have to read Your Honor, the BCS is not good for college football. The way we have it now, we have two teams. They pick one and two. I don't dispute that. But the rest of the games are meaningless. The bowls are not filled up. The media could care less except for one game, one versus two. This is what I always propose. Let's have a playoff system in this respect. Let's have a committee. Let's have it with athletic directors, conference commissioners, former coaches who are no longer good, and pick eight teams. Pick eight teams and let's play in a bowl game on January 1. After January 1, that same committee then pick the top four, and now we have the playoff. Why is that good? Because then a team like Boise State, for example, would have a chance to be among the top four because it might be the top eight. They go beat Oklahoma. Five, so what I'm saying, it's good for college football? No, because just one and two was the only one that's interest. You and I both know we've covered a lot of bowl games, and, and, and it doesn't have the same feel 
as the national championship game. I, I would agree with that. I think we're losing our way a little bit here. Now, tell me why you think we're going to miss the BCS. Because it was why? simple to get number one and number two. Usually when you get it down... Why is his way not better? Because if you, go with, if you go with his format after January 1st, you're going to extend the season three more weeks. Oh. The educators aren't going to let that happen. Well, no. we're not really... We're not, really, wait, wait, we're not, arguing, we're not arguing for his system. We're, you're miss the BCS and say we Absolutely. won't miss it. Why won't we miss it, Count? Because, gonna have a two because if you well, take the letter C out of it, you have it perfectly. Oh, uh, uh, that is going to be bottom line, the bottom line the is the two best teams in the nation. Okay. If you go to four, it's teams, not good for one college okay. football. Well, here, here, I'm, I'm, here I'm ready to render a verdict here. Uh, the one thing I will say, Counselor May, there is no doubt that when this playoff comes in, there is going to be the law of unintended yep. consequences. There is no question that fans are going to complain about it. They think it's going to be utopia. It is not going to be. It is not going to be. Council also one thing I would say, they're taking the C, uh, come on, that, that's a, number that's five, a number joke, six, that's entirely, seven. Well, that's going to happen. You don't listen to all the good things council I council say. Council everything, everything evolves. College football is evolved. Their fans are not going to miss the, the BCS. Object they the will. BCS. They will start to complain the later. The BCS met its needs, but those needs will pass in two years. They, this court rules in favor created, of counselor holds. They're created, not going to miss the BCS. It was created to get number one versus number two. And <laughs> that, they their job. The court they got it done. The one court one the two is the not going to miss the BCS. Yes. Be, before hey. the bowl system, they yes, right? man. It's like yes. Hey, Mark. Mark. going to be number one. If one played two, you wouldn't be involved. Now, if we get down to 14, 15, you might make the cut. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're not going to miss it. They're going to miss it. We are going. I can to guarantee you right, right now, by 2016, 2017, they'll be screaming to bring the beast. I won't be living that long. <laughs> College football final, presented by AT and T. Florida State was that top five team to lose to an unranked opponent last week against NC State and apparently made the Seminoles mad because they smashed BC. DJ Manuel firing out to James Wilder Jr. Looked at it a while, ruled it a touchdown 51 to 7. Knowles get back on track in the ACC. Miami Herald wrote this after Miami got beat by Notre Dame. Kane said, We still control our own destiny in the ACC. No, you don't. You know what controls your destiny? The ACC Wheel of Destiny! Come on, big bucks! Big bucks! Where is he going to land? <laughs> He's going to land on uh, Miami! I'd like to buy a W for Al Golden's team, Pat. And I'm sorry there's not one available against North Carolina because Giovanni Bernard is taking all of Miami's W dreams and turning them into L's and T's and D's. North Carolina up 7 nothing. Bernard went for a buck 77, two touches. In the last couple weeks, he's been on fire running the ball here. Gets terrific blocking up front, makes some nifty moves, takes it in for the score. North Carolina not eligible for the postseason, but they win it 18 to 14. Virginia Tech is Duke. Well, Duke went up 20 to nothing, and then finally Virginia Tech awoke for the first time this season. Uh, Duke went up, and then they were Duke. But I'm glad to see Virginia Tech finally in the second half, after being down 20 to play like we expected them to play all year. That was Logan Thomas, Marcus Davis, Virginia Tech, a 41 nothing run to close it. They beat Duke 41 to 20. Duke still needs another win. All right, pencils down. Papers in. Time to hand in the papers right here. These are the midterm exams in Professor Davis's advanced learning of college football class. Let's hand out some passing grades and some failing grades for team at about the mid midway mark. Give me an A, Mark. Who's got them? Well, the A has got to be Oregon. Chip Kelly just reloads out there. Everybody thought that they would be okay this year, but they've been fantastic. 6-0. and Marcus Mariota at the quarterback. Running the football, Kenyon Barner, they've done a terrific job. How about Florida, 6-0? Will Muschamp's done a fabulous job with this team. Nobody thought they'd be this good, not even close to this good. Defeating LSU at home and other teams on the road. And the Ohio Bobcats, Frankie Solich, getting it done, 7-0. And they beat Penn State on the road this year. So those are my three teams that get an A. I give you a passing mark for your assessment, too, Mr. May. Uh, Mr. Holt, you see your paper. Well, you have to give an A to Kansas State. I think Colin Klein and Coach Snyder, I mean, they went in, they beat. 
beat Miami 52-13 home, then go to uh, Norman and beat Oklahoma on the road. I think you also have to give it to Notre Dame. They're just playing so well. You understand they have not given up one running, rushing touchdown this year, and their defense only given up three touchdowns all year. They're playing great defense, but you also have to give it to Louisville. They beat North Carolina and had them very decisively beat, but I just think Charlie Strong and Bridgewater are just too good. Okay, who needs a ruler across the knuckles to get an F, Mark? It's got to be Gene Chizik and the Auburn Tigers. This is a team a couple years ago. They won a national championship. They're one and five right now. They can't get out of their own way, and they got beat by Hotty Toddy. Gosh almighty. How about Missouri? Let's play some old band football. Go to the SEC. Well, guess what? Three and four overall. Oh, and four in the SEC. Old man football. Are you kidding me? They got housed by Alabama on Saturday. And how about the Big Ten? There's not a team in the conference that's going to be any good. By the time the season's over, playing in the conference championship team, you may have two teams with multiple losses, and the winner may have three losses. I'm pleased with your work, Mr. May. You're making progress as a student. Mr. Thank Holt, your Fs? Oh, the first F has to go to Washington State. You know, they got beat by Colorado. They finished strong last year, and it looked like they were going to be pretty good, but they've been a real disappointment this year. Also, Kentucky. I mean, in three quarters, they got beat today by uh, Arkansas, 49-7, to and they called the game in the third quarter. I think Kentucky's been a real disappointment, and then Boston College. I mean, they've lost the Army. Uh, they, they just are not playing particularly well, and they were embarrassed today by Florida State. But I want to say this about Mr. May. One thing is, I think he's very partial in his judgment and in his grading. To say the whole Big Ten when Ohio State's one of the better teams. They're ineligible to play for the conference championship and they're ineligible for a bowl game. They're ineligible for a reason. Okay. Uh, both of you have done well at the Davis Institute for Advanced College Football Studies. You can maintain your scholarships. And heaven knows I have both you guys on scholarship. <laughs> one, one more helmet sticker on the night, and this one in honor of our good friend Bino Cook, who passed away at the age of 81 earlier this week. When Bino was on college football final, he always used to get on me and say, we need to do more with the Ivy League. So this helmet sticker in honor of Bino Cook goes to an Ivy Leaguer who had a great day. Princeton's Karan Reed had six tackles, four for loss, and also a safety as Brown was able, or Princeton was able to beat Brown 19 to nothing. So Karan Reed gets an honorary Bino Cook helmet sticker from the Ivy League. And isn't it ironic that on the weekend that Bino passes away that two of the helmet stickers go the two teams who played the first college football game ever, Rutgers that's and Princeton. That is good. That's very good. Let, uh, they, I want to play the last one. <laughs> good night. Good night.